Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I'm so glad you're there. Are you aware that we have a membership program called the Recordology Vinyl Nation? For a small monthly fee, you can get an extra show every week and a bunch of other cool things as well. Consider joining, link is in the description below. I mention that because still people come to me and say, I didn't even know you had this, so I wanted to bring that up to you. But today, we're here to take another look at the LP7, which has the distinction of being the most expensive turntable that I've ever seen, ever owned, and ever reviewed on this channel. As I've said many times, Recordology has always been geared towards the entry level. So I'm very surprised that we were ever able to venture up into this territory. This turntable is the flagship model for Audio-Technica and retails at approximately $800. Is that too much? Do I still like it? Would I recommend it? Check out this video to find out. This is Recordology. So like I said, this is the flagship model, still is. It's been that way for at least three years, I believe, for Audio-Technica. This is the successor to the LP5, which I think they still sell that as well. Uh, by the way, let's start with the dust cover. What we're gonna do is I'm going to give you a brief overview. We've done the full review. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check out the original video. So I'm not gonna rehash that, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the feature set. And then I'm just gonna you know, talk about what my experiences are, point out any flaws or things that I like. And then we'll do a sound test, a direct feed sound test at the end. Let's start with the dust cover itself. It has a beautiful smoked dark gray uh, dust cover, which is beautiful. I love it. I also love the fact that they've put an extra large badge on here and just a little subtle touches there. I don't really care for the fact it lifts all the way off. I know that's sort of a premium turntable feature and um, you know, it is what it is. I prefer the dust covers that hinge up. It's just more convenient that way. And true to form, I've done a terrible job of preventing this from getting scuffed and scratched. This polycarbonate that they use is just so susceptible to scratches and, and whatnot. So anyway, that's the dust cover. It's beautiful looking, but again, I wish it were hinged. Now the turntable, I wanna just talk for a minute about the weight of this. And I've mentioned this before, but this thing is hefty, hefty, hefty. Like this thing weighs more, like considerably more than LP120, which is already weighted. This thing is an absolute beast. They say it's an MDF base, but there has to be weights in here. There has to be because this is, it's a plastic um, veneer with apparently very dense MDF and some weights because this thing is so incredibly heavy. I can't even convey it to you. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It's got, you know, a great styling aesthetic. These big feet here that, you know, take on the corner curve aesthetic of the turntable is fantastic. It looks phenomenal. It looks high end. Is it worth $800? Well, stay tuned. I'll let you know what I think about that. Let's look at the bottom of this thing. Yeah, I never had any idea that um, I would ever own something of this caliber. Now, I, I say, I, I'm talking about it like it's a high end turntable, which to me it is. And I think to a lot of people it is. Other people will say, well, that's a good starter turntable or that's a that's a mid-grade turntable, nothing to get excited about. Because, you know, VPI turntables, you know, 25,000 bucks and up. It's just crazy. Again, I always point back to the people that spend $100,000 on cabling. You know, I'll never be one of those people. And, you know, there's a law of diminished returns. The more you spend between $100 and $300 will get you way much more than the difference between $500 and $5,000, in my opinion. That being said, I've never touched anything over $800, bucks, but I've heard that said by others, and I believe it. Okay, so the uh, plinth material is solid. Whatever it is, I believe the, the primary part of it is solid with uh, the main bearing drilled in there. The feet are externally attached, and you can see this box here which contains the preamp circuits, the line outputs, and probably the main board right there. I just did this whole segment and realized you couldn't see it. So this foam here correlates to the bottom of the tone arm. So I'm guessing that if you needed to make an adjustment to that or remove it, you could potentially do it there. 
Um, let's take a look at the feet up close here. By the way, I want to apologize. I'm using the ring light. I, I'm just too busy today, so I didn't have a time to film when I had the good daylight. Plus, in Denver today, the weather was crap. It was like gray and dark and snowy, and it never even really got bright. There wasn't really good filming light anyway, so we're relegated to the ring light here. So I apologize. It always shows up the dust and all that stuff. Uh, but let's look at the foot here. So it's got a uh, plastic housing right there and again the curvature matches pretty dang close to the plinth and uh, we got this kind of inset shell that pivots and then this rubber slice right there and there's an there's sort of a suction cup action as you saw earlier where if this thing's on a smooth surface the weight of it makes it kind of suction i don't know if that's by design or whatnot but these work really good i think that they're good you know dampening sound isolating feet they do a great, great job. Let's take a closer look at that main bearing. I mean, there's not much to do here other than observe it. You can see the mounting screws there as well. And another shot. Ooh, look how dusty that is. This light is so unforgiving. Stuff will look clean and then you'll put it in this light and you'll be like, wow, it's actually filthy. Okay, so looking at the back here, this is obviously a belt-driven turntable. We'll look closer at that in a minute. It is a 12-volt, 2-amp machine. And I believe this is manufactured by hand pin turntables. I haven't been able to confirm that though. So let's look at the controls. We've got the preamp circuit, which is right there in front of us. We've got the line output and a moving magnet or moving coil selector switch for the cartridge. So if you're running a higher end moving coil that requires that extra bit of amplification, you can get it right there. Also the LP3 has that as well, which I think is kind of cool. So if you want to try out some higher end cartridges, assumedly from Audio Technica or others, you could do that. Uh, also, there's the grounding post. This is a, um, with the built-in preamp select, you're going to have the grounding terminal. So if you're not using the built-in preamp, you need to connect the grounding terminal. And then finally, the 12 volt power supply. This is powered off of DC. That was one of the gripes that people had. For me, I mean, it is another wall wart that you got to find room for. Um, but besides that, it works. It's functional. And uh, yeah, we'll get to the motor noise or lack thereof here in a minute. Let's look topside next. One thing that annoys me about filming at night like this is you've got all these different color temperatures. I've got these uh, LED lights. I've got these halogens. I've got incandescents. And I've got this LED ring light. And they all have different color temperatures. So you'll see these reflective areas here. I just turned off these down lights I've got over here that were incandescent and was just showing up as an orange glow. So that's, I prefer daylight. Daylight is the best way to go. That's, that's the Alfred Hitchcock in me. I prefer to film outside and use filming in the shade outside is the best lighting you can get for just sort of blanket lighting, fill lighting. So I really like to use daylight when possible. Okay. Enough about the lighting. We're not here to talk about lighting. So this is the backside kind of looking down on top of the turntable. Um, it does have a two-speed motor, and there is a pulley right there, which obviously the belt connects to, but this motor is mounted on a little pivoting shock mount there. It's absolutely silent. You cannot hear anything in terms of motor noise or rumble. I mean, it is whisper quiet. I'm not sure what motor they're using, but it is a good one. It sounds really good. It's very interesting how this main bearing area can be removed. And we saw those screws that seem to correlate with those spots right there. I don't know, let me know down in the comments below what that is. Is that so you can get in there and lubricate the bearing? I'm not 100% sure, but um, this does rotate by the way. Some spindles don't, this one does. And the weight of the platter rests on this brass ring right there. Um, over here, we've got the on and off speed control switch. All right, next gripe is it is a two-speed turntable. I wish it was three-speed. I really do. I think that that would be a good thing. There's also a light there. Again, the, the, the knobs, the hardware is all machined metal. Very high quality. You can see how there's like this uh, textured pattern machined into it. Just feels high quality. A lot of it has to do with weight and inertia, which this seems to have in uh, leaps and bounds. All right, we're going to take a closer look at the uh, tone arm itself next okay so here is the tone arm itself this is really nice i do love it it has obviously an anti-skate adjustment a counterbalance adjustment 
but this also has a VTA, a vertical tracking angle adjustment. We turn this ring to raise or lower this guy, the entire piece in the back raises or lowers so you can adjust the VTA and make sure your tone arm is horizontal to the plinth. That will allow you to make adjustments for various cartridges because some of the Grado cartridges, for example, can be tall. This actually will not adjust high enough to accommodate properly the VTA needed for the Grado uh, Prestige series, which I was kind of surprised it didn't get up high enough for that. Uh, that being said, it seems to do a good job. One gripe I have about this is there is some play here. Notice how the whole thing kind of wiggles. <laughs> It shouldn't do that. I don't think that this should move. I mean, it's it's not quite as solid. So what ends up happening is down here, there's this much play when it's in a locked position, which it shouldn't, oops, shouldn't be doing. Uh, materials. So the tone arm is metal, probably aluminum. Uh, the VTA adjustment dial is plastic. I believe. Let's see here. Hard to tell. I think this knob is plastic. The counterbalance is metal. The counterbalance dial is plastic. The actual um, pivot here is metal. Uh, the tone arm lift is metal and a really good one. It's got you know good play, good control. The clip here is super cheap plastic. You know, you spent eight hundred dollars. You would think they would have a little bit fancier clip. <laughs> it, it's this cheap. It's tiny stuff like that and that snaps off and that could totally ruin your day okay so it obviously is going to be using a half inch mount typical for the audio technica products it's got comes with this i think this is the stock one i've moved these around a little bit so i may be guilty uh presenting you with a non-original head shell but i think this is the original head shell it's got a nice big lift it's just like a frame really it will fit and accommodate a lot of cartridge as you can see there. So this is the cartridge that it ships with. This is the Audio-Technica VMN 20EB. This is a dual moving magnet elliptical cartridge. It, the stylus itself is a 0.3 mil by 0.7 mil, which is pretty standard size. As you can see with the standard half inch mount, it does a great job and it can accommodate, you know, a lot of cartridge in here. You can see there's a lot of vacant space. This is a good neutral sounding cartridge, got no issues with it. I've really felt no need to upgrade it for audio quality. Sometimes I like running my Concord on here just because it looks cool, but uh, I thought I would show you this. The, the stylus replacement itself is about $79. The cartridge is between 120 and 150. So it's sort of a mid-range cartridge. It's a good one though. But the Audio-Technica cartridge line is, uh, is famous. So you can upgrade and just you know go to town customizing the sound with any of their cartridges and like i said i've tried a couple okay the next thing we really need to address here is this incredible platter this thing comes with i've never before since seen anything like this but it looks like plastic it's as heavy as all get out i mean like pounds this thing is heavy um Anybody want to take a guess at what this is? Man, this thing looks dirty under this light. This is embarrassing. I'm sorry how dirty and dust. Actually, this thing's been in storage, which leads me to, uh, do I still like it? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I'm like, it must be steel. It must be, it feels like cast iron. The thing is so heavy. By the way, it's 20 millimeters thick. Or yeah, 20 millimeters thick. But no, it's made out of polyoxymethylene. You may be saying to yourself, what the heck is polyoxymethylene? It's a thermo-engineered, it's a thermoplastic, and it's extremely rigid. Apparently it has good anti-resonance properties, and apparently it's a fingerprint magnet. It, it just, it's weird that they chose to use this, but it's fantastic. It's, you know, there's no, there's not an, an absolute, completely silent operation. There's no wobble. The thing is just, you know, perfect. Like I said before, uh, it is belt driven. It has an enormous belt because the belt goes around the outside. But unlike the U-turns, it still surprises me how much people gripe about U-turns. But unlike the U-turns, you never have to touch the belt once you install it because the belt doesn't need to be adjusted. But it is an external belt. I think that looks cool. Some people, well, people grouch about everything. So I keep saying some people don't like this, some people don't like that. Everything somebody doesn't like, right? They're, everything about it about anything somebody out there 
isn't going to be satisfied. But the speed control is down here. And that is a cursory tour of the LP7. Now, we're going to listen to it, direct feed in a minute. But what do I think about this thing? I've had it now for a little over a year. And what are my thoughts? Would I recommend it? By the way, I was just doing a little research a minute ago in between takes, and I noticed that Audio-Technica has this thing marked up to 850 now on their website. I'm not sure what the... Um, what the Amazon price is, but the price has gone up on this. But that's typical. The uh, logistics issues that Audio Technica and others are facing right now has made shipping these units next to impossible at the prices they were at. I had a lengthy discussion with a prominent turntable manufacturer slash importer the other day, and the what's going on behind the scenes in terms of trying to get product to the United States, trying to maintain product and trying to sell it, is incredible. The shipping is incredibly expensive right now. By the way, a little inside baseball trivia that I learned is that if you see turntables uh, coming out these days without dust covers, apparently the cost of making dust covers and shipping them specifically, how many turntables you can cram in a shipping container, is exponential. And if they can figure out a way to do it with a cloth dust cover or a low slim profile, then the, sh the cost of the manufacturer and therefore the cost we pay go down. But Audio-Technica is having a real hard time keeping stock. That's why prices are going up on everything. Remember when the LP1 or the LP60s were like 90 bucks, 98 bucks, and now they're 130 if, if you can get them, if you can get them. All right, enough of that. Final verdict before we give it a listen and you judge for yourself, what do I think of this thing? My opinion is this. I was using this as my daily driver for some time. I became frustrated with the fact it wasn't three speeds because I wanted to play 78s. Audio-Technica says this turntable monitors its speed and maintains its accuracy, but I prefer a pitch slider. I, I just like the LP120s. I just, and I know this is more elegant. This is, you know, more sleek looking. It does look beautiful. It's still fully manual, completely manual. There's nothing on it. It won't even auto stop on its own. So in that regard, it's no different than a much cheaper LP120 series. But with that, you get the speed adjustment. You get direct drive if you're into that. You still get a tone arm that you can... By the way, this is a J-shaped tone arm, not an s shape. But you can still put different head shells, different cartridges on, all that stuff. In my experience, it sounds great. There's no problem with it other than the sort of jankiness of, of this was is, see how that moves I feel like that shouldn't move that much and if you adjust this down it tightens it but then it positions it in the lowest position this should stay rigid regardless of the VTA height so that's that's annoying that's anno not enough to cause a major major issue but it is annoying so I would say that this is good it is highly recommended it is not perfect I think it's overpriced I think that 300 would be a more appropriate high end. That's having no idea how much this thing costs to build, but apparently it's costing more to ship it because the prices are going up. I am kind of surprised also they haven't moved to an LP, I guess nine, because they seem to be doing odd numbers. They had the five and seven, whatever. At this point, they still have the LP five. I just think that the cost of making new turntables and bringing them to market right now is not sustainable. People that have never touched one of these or seen them in person have told me, oh, it looks cheap, but it's lightweight, it's a piece of crap. It is definitely not a piece of crap. It definitely feels premium. It definitely feels high quality. It's just not my idea, my ideal turntable. I guess what's the best way to say that. I just like, I like an LP120 or, you know, the higher end LP140s that have the VTA adjustment as well. I prefer that, I guess, is in terms of an aesthetic. By the way, if you're interested in that kind of a turntable, stay tuned because little birdie tells me we get a, we're going to be reviewing a nice direct drive unit in the near future with a pitch slider and strobe markings, which I love. I love that stuff. So anyway, it's still recommended. If this is, if this is stuff that is good to you, you like this stuff then I say go for it. There's no problem. And you can afford it. That's the other thing. It is a bit, mm, <laughs> the price is super high. It is super, super high, but it may be just perfect for what you're looking at. All right, enough babbling. Time to test out the audio. Headphones on, guys. Stereo direct feed. Here we go. I just want a quick word about the transform. Nope, not transformers. Power supplies. I was very firmly corrected of not calling these DC transformers, but... 
power supplies that Audio Technica provides for their products are absolutely massive. As you can see, if you were to compare this to a, a standard wall ward, it's about double the length. It is, it's beefy. It feels high quality. It's got an adjustable, or not adjustable, but a replaceable tip there, depending on what country you're in. It's just, it's just well made. Okay, there we go. Call me an Audio Technica fanboy, but I just their stuff is just good. It's just good. It's consistently good. Um, I'll be doing a line direct feed to a digital audio recorder, and I will sync that audio with what you are seeing on camera. And for audio, you're in for a treat today because we are listening to a pretty rare record. If you're near or have been or are in the Denver area, you will know of Elitch Gardens. It's our theme park, our not one and only. We have a couple different theme parks, but this is the primary one at its original location was home to a famous big band era ballroom called the Trocadero, which I've mentioned before. And I have a couple of these Jazz at the Troc records, which are really, really cool. This is from 1967. This particular copy is awesome because it's autographed. Those are real autographs by some of the artists. Most notably, perhaps, Peanuts Hucko at the top there was once the leader of the Glenn Miller Orchestra in the 1970s. And on the back, we've got some more scribbling. So this record, if it could tell stories, right? But this ought to be pretty fun. And it should help us with not having any issues listening to some music. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So let's go ahead and spin it up and give her a listen. You guys let me know what you think of this $849 now turntable. Okay guys, and that's gonna do it for today. If you wouldn't mind, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you didn't. If you haven't already subscribed, hit subscribe. We do two shows a week, plus an extra third bonus show for members. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, you guys. Also active in the community tab, as well as the comments. We've got stuff going on almost every day. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. But for now, that's gonna do it, guys. Happy record hunting, we'll see you next time.